Hello and welcome to this demonstration of Fem Design 3D Soil. In order to use 3D Soil, we have to start Fem Design 3D Structure. When the program starts, we get this configuration message and we have to choose a code. In this case, the Swedish code will be used. Then we have to choose whether we want to calculate soil as solid elements or not. We check this option, otherwise the soil will be calculated with bedding modulus. A tower crane foundation will be designed in this example. The load cases and load combinations will be imported from another file. In the same way, it's possible to import a building or any other structure made in FEM design. We go to the loads, and in this case, we have three different load cases representing three different positions of the crane. The crane have four supports and the distance between each of them is six meters. Now we can model the crane foundation. We go back to structure, choose a foundation object, foundation slab, and go to the properties of the foundation slab. The height of the foundation will be one meter. I want the alignment to be on the top. We go to the material, concrete C2530. The rest of the data are correct. Okay. I want the insertion plane to be at zero and the foundation will be extended one meter outside each of the supports so it will be eight by eight meters. We take a look at the model. Everything seems to be okay. So now we can save the project. Now we model the soil beneath the foundation. We choose the foundation object, soil this time. We go to the soil properties. The limit depth level is the same as the depth to solid ground or rocks. According to the geotechnical investigation, the distance to the limestone rock in this area is 6 meters. Now we set the different soil layers, but first we have to create them. When creating a new soil, we have to specify the soil's deformation and strength properties. In the place where the foundation will be standing, there are two major soil layers. The first layer is made ground mainly containing sand. We specify the elasticity modulus of the sand and Poisson's ratio. The elasticity calculated with odometer test and the shear modulus are automatically calculated. It's possible to define anisotropic soils as well. We go to strength properties. The made ground have very high permeability, so drained analysis will be used. Then we fill the rest of the strength properties of the made ground, such as cohesion, friction angle of the made ground, and the unit weight, both the dry and the saturated. So now we are done with the first soil layer. We move on to create the rest of the soil. The second soil layer is containing clay till. This time we use the elasticity obtained from odometer test and we specify Poisson's ratio. The loads from the crane last for a short time and the clay till have very low permeability so the water will not be drained during the crane's operation time. Therefore undrained analysis will be used. We specify the rest of the clay till strength properties and now we're done with creating the soil layers. So we put them in order from top to bottom. First the main ground and then the clay till. Of course it's possible to put as many soil layers as needed in the model. We give the main ground and the clay till different colors so it will be easier to see the difference between them. And now we are ready to draw the soil. The soil should be extended outside the foundation in order to simulate the surrounding soil and to avoid stress concentrations in the soil boundaries. One or two times the width of the foundation is normally good enough. The crane foundation is 8 by 8 meters, so the soil will be extended 8 meters in each side. The soil beneath the foundation is done. Now we adjust the soil by modifying the existing boreholes. We mark all the boreholes, one in each corner of the soil model, we define the top of the soil, the foundation level, which is the same as the lower edge of the foundation, and the groundwater level. 
Then we define the thickness of each strata. Now the soil model is done and we can see the made ground, the clay till and the groundwater. The whole model with structure, soil and loads are now completed. The next step is to generate the finite element mesh. Specify the finite element size. I want the element size of the foundation to be 1 meter and the element size of the surrounding soil will be 2 meters. Now generate the mesh. The model is now ready for analysis. We go to calculate, choose load combinations and OK. The calculation is now completed and we take a look at the results. We investigate the settlements first. We go to load combinations, displacements and OK. Now we can see the whole model with the foundation and the soil beneath. We check the settlements at the foundation level and specifically the settlements under the crane supports. The maximum value of the settlement is OK and the differential settlements are satisfying as well. Now we take a look at the stresses in the soil beneath the foundation. We go to solid stresses and choose the stresses in the vertical direction. What we see now are the stresses caused by the foundation's dead load and the crane loads. We investigate the soil stresses under the crane supports. We choose a section through the supports with the biggest loads. And we check the soil stresses in different levels. Finally, we design the crane foundation. We go to reinforce concrete design and choose surface reinforcement. Then use auto design and apply 16 mm bars with 250 mm spacing in the top and the bottom of the foundation. And we run the auto design. As we see, we have 16 mm bars with 250 mm spacing in all the directions and the utilization of the concrete foundation is not exceeding 100%, so the foundation is now designed.